Blessings, everybody. It is 8.18 this morning here in Florida. This is take five. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm telling you guys, I'm having, my, my computer's just being a real bear. I might have to go get me a new one uh, be, before long. Um, but anyways, this is a, a compliments of Susan. She is a dear sister in Christ here on my channel. And she sent this video of Pastor Prince. Uh, to me uh, a little over a week ago and um, I've been doing other stuff and like I said my computer has been a bear and I couldn't find it what she sent to me so she did resend it to me and I am gonna uh, put it on here it is a, a wonderful blessing and I appreciate it so much sweetheart and you know you guys just take a listen because this is Pastor Prince he does preach grace uh, he is a wonderful pastor, and he's out of Singapore, and let's see, what else? He's got, I mean, I tell you, through the Holy Spirit, he has reached all over the world, you guys. Um, so, please take a listen, and um, I will give a little couple little teachings at the end there, and... Well, anyways, here, I'm going to try this again. <laughs> here we go. The question of sin will not be brought up for the believer. Are you listening? Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, amen. Hallelujah. Welcome, church. Welcome to the house of God. Amen? Amen. Look at at least two persons around you and tell them, I believe you are in store for something great. All right? Amen. Amen. The world is full of bad news. Only in the house of God you can find good news. Amen. Amen. Only in the house of God. I can understand why Pastor Lawrence gets excited every time he comes up here. Huh? All right? It's like God's heart is so full of goodness that God's heart is just... Bursting forth, if I can use that word, to let that goodness come into your life, into your families, into your careers, into your ministries, amen, into all that you are doing. God, God's heart is so full of goodness. And I believe that this pent up goodness of God that was laid up in God, it was in a sense painful for God because if you are love, if you are the personification of love and you're not able to express, that's one of the hardest things you can ever do. Those times when you are away from your, your son, your daughter, your grandson, right, Matthew? Those times, granddaughter, excuse me, granddaughter, all right? I see so many grandchildren now this. And uh, when you're away from them, you know, it's like every minute becomes so slow. Right? Yeah. You know, it's like so hard because love wants to be with the person you love. Love wants not just to be with, love wants to kiss, hold. And the word worship, worship God, worship in Greek is pros, kunio. Pros is to come close. Pros, kunio, kiss. To come close enough to kiss. That's the word worship in Greek. Isn't that beautiful? When we worship God, we are coming close to God to kiss. All right, we say that, oh, you know, uh, Pastor Prince, uh, I thought, uh, you know, that, that's a very human expression. Actually, we are made in God's image. We kiss because God kisses. Amen. And like the father of the prodigal son, the picture of God, the father who ran and showered his son, his returning son with kisses. Amen. I believe when Jesus died on the cross, when all the claims of divine justice and righteousness was fully met in the body of Jesus Christ, the pent-up goodness of God was finally released, mm -hmm. was finally, finally unleashed upon a world, a guilty world, a lost, dying, crying, sighing world. And that's why God tore the veil. It wasn't so much to let, let man come in to see what man could not see before. It was actually God stepping out. If God had stepped out any earlier, man would have been destroyed because of God's holiness. Can you understand that, people? Amen? So, it is not that the cross of Jesus made God good. Don't fall into the error. Alright? Sometimes people think that Jesus is the loving one, God is the judge. That's erroneous thinking. 
Remember John 3, 16? For God, for who? God so loved the world that he gave. Long before the cross, God so loved you and I. God gave his son. Can I be good, amen? I have an adorable son. And you can tell, right? I love him. And I love my daughter. You know, I, I love them both with a passion. Like, like, I think no father can. I really love them. That's why traveling for me is very hard. Amen. I miss my wife. I miss my children. And I look at some people, they travel no problem. For them, it's like, you know, I meet business people and, and they, they look forward to travel. You know, for me, every minute away from them is sheer torture. But when I'm with them, it's paradise. Amen. So God wants to be with all of us. God had a dream. And that dream was destroyed by Adam and Eve when they rebelled against God's plans and purposes. But let me tell you this. God never gave up the dream of having a family. Yeah. Amen. So God gave up His only begotten Son. So who says God doesn't believe in giving? God Himself gave. When God wanted many sons, God gave His only begotten. And now... He's not no longer the only begotten. I mean, he's still always the God's special one, but he's now the first begotten, which means all of us are the second, third, fourth, fifth, and God now has a family. Amen? A family that enjoys his goodness. So the cross did not make God good. God was already good, but God's goodness was hindered, restricted, thwarted, from expression, from his full expressions, because of man's sin. Now you need to understand, if our judicial court today decide not to judge or to preside over a criminal case, and then uh, sort of like, ah, never mind, boys will be boys, and tomorrow we don't have any more courts in Singapore, you know what? Our the, the very fabric of our, our civilization, amen, our prosperity will all be destroyed. Why? Because it's important that there be law and order. Can I have a good amen? If God means something today and doesn't mean anything tomorrow, the whole universe will disintegrate. Because by the word of the Lord, the heavens stand fast. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. So you need to understand that there is a place that of God's wrath. Now unfortunately, those who preach grace... All right, sometimes they go to the extreme of just, you know, ignoring hell or ignoring the place of God's wrath and, and judgment. And, uh, and by, by doing that, they don't realize they are watering down, they are actually uh, uh, vitiating the effect of the love of God, the cross of Jesus Christ. If your estimation of judgment is very little, all right, your judgment, uh, the idea of judgment is 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 uh, sparse. You know, you don't have that kind of clear understanding. Then your understanding of God's love is also very little. It's also sparse. Until you can appreciate judgment, you cannot appreciate the love that rescued us. You cannot, you cannot appreciate the depths of the sufferings that Jesus went through. So right now is a great way to start this service with this verse, which I know that many of you will say, Amen, as I quote it. Ready? Revelations 20. Revelations 20. The devil who deceived them. Now you want to find out what the devil, that, that guy who always comes and destroys, that comes to steal, to kill and destroy, he is the reason we have... Uh, you know, nations at the brink of war today. He is the reason why children are being killed, uh, uh, taken away as sex slaves. Right? He is the reason why they, uh, uh, if you are, tra you are, you are you're taking medicine for some condition in your body, that condition is not from God. Right? The devil is the one that's causing all the problems. When God establishes a kingdom on earth, there will be no more disease. Hey, look at that. When the devil is not around and Jesus is fully in control, no more disease, no more hospitals. Hey, Amen. No more criminal Amen. court, nothing. Peace and prosperity and plenty for everybody. Amen. That tells you when he taught us to pray, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. It's all going to be well. Amen. Praise God. So it's okay for us to pray that way today for our world, our church, our families. Amen. Even for our country that we may live a quiet and peaceable life. Pray for the leaders of your land. Amen. But wasn't it the end of the devil? The book of Revelation, the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. And they'll be tormented day and night forever and ever. That's the end of the devil. There was a demon-possessed person. 
that a demon seems not to want to come out. Many years ago, I still remember this. And when this verse was quoted, the demon scream and scream and scream and shout, Shut up! Don't say that! Don't read that! This one verse the devil doesn't want you to read. And he'll be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne. Stop! What is a great white throne? I saw a great white throne. I want to tell you right now, church, that one day, all men, whether they are dead or alive, when Jesus comes again, they all stand before God. You and I will not be there. We Amen. are raptured already. Amen. As believers, John 5, 24, real quick, and then we come back to Revelation 20. Most assuredly, Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say to you, He who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment. Amen. But has passed from death into life. Amen. Listen, whatever you hear, anywhere you go, whatever you read, if someone gives you the impression you as a believer will come into judgment, chuck it aside. It is not about Jesus. Listen to Jesus' own words. Don't even listen to Pastor Prince. Amen. Listen to Jesus' own words. Amen. Jesus says, truly, truly, in the original, Amen, Amen. When he, when he prefaced his statement with Amen, Amen, that means it's veracity, integrity. My integrity is behind this. Amen. Double. Double confirm. Double Amen. Okay? Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me as everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Amen. Do you see that? Amen. It's passed from Amen. death Amen. into life. So death is behind us, right? right? Death is not in front of us. Yes, yes I know Christians die, or we, we say die, but actually the moment their hearts stop beating. Straight away, they are more alive than you can ever dream of. Straight away, they are the presence of the Lord. Because for the Christian, there's no more death. Jesus conquered death. Death is not in front of us. Death is behind us. Right. Even in a tragedy, alright, a plane crash or whatever, before it happens, the spirit is taken. Amen. The body is destroyed. In any case, even if you are alive, when Jesus comes again, you won't be going up with this body. He's going to transform your body in the rapture immediately. The first thing that changes is your body. Your body becomes immortal. Your body becomes incorruptible. Your body be forever young, forever strong, forever healthy. Amen. I can take that, can you? Amen. So remember, oh we will never come into judgment. But what about the judgment seat of Christ, Pastor Prince? The judgment seat of Christ is one of the most misquoted, misunderstood passages of Scripture. Right at the rapture, we are transformed in our bodies. We, we are caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Don't forget, the first thing that happens, we shall not all sleep. That's what the Bible calls for the, for the, for the believer. The Bible calls death sleep. Oh. We shall not all sleep. And it's not true that everybody will die. Right? I, I use death loosely because for the believer, the believer doesn't die. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment. We shall all be changed in the twinkling of an eye. So thank God, God is very uh, considerate. Now, many of you are afraid of heights. God changes your body where there's no more fear, and then He raptures you. Amen. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So the first thing, first thing that happens is that you have a new glorified body. Now, don't forget, in the, the next thing that happens is the judgment seat of Christ. The word there is judgment seat is one word in the Greek. Bema. Bema. Have you all watched Ben-Hur? At the end of that famous uh, chariot uh, race scene, and, and Ben-Hur won, and he stood before the emperor, and the emperor placed on him that golden laurel, that wreath, right? Made of uh, olive, uh, golden olive leaf. Remember that? They call it the Stephanos. If your name is Stephen, all right, it comes from that. That means victory. It's a wreath of victory. So he placed it on his head. You know where, where that happens? Bema. Bema, seat of Christ. I don't know why they put judgment seat. The Christian doesn't come into judgment with God anymore. No. The judgment seat is called Bema, seat of Christ, where you receive rewards or lack of rewards. Amen. But not a question of your salvation. The question of sin will never be brought up. Amen? Amen. And it's a question of uh, where you'll be for eternity in terms of your position. Whether you rule over five cities, ten cities, there'll, be, there'll be also be a hierarchy. Alright? In the new kingdom. 
And uh, those who are faithful will find that God will reward your faithfulness. Amen? That's the day. So it's not a place. If someone frightens you with judgment seat of Christ, you know, every thought that you have spoken, uh, that you have thought wrong, that you have spoken wrong, will all be shown to you in that day. This was your life. <laughs> You know, when uh, Lawrence was up there, look at his thoughts. Wow, he's saying, I, look, I wonder if they see my muscles or not. You know, this was your thought. You will all be shown. No, 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 you will not be shown. It's not a question of sin. It's all finished. Jesus so effectually put away sin Amen. from the sight of God. The question of sin will not be brought up for the believer. Amen. Are you listening? Another thing you must know is this. The one that's judging you is your righteousness. Jesus. Amen. If you're going to use the word judge, the one that's judging in the Bema seat of Christ is your righteousness. Jesus. Another thing people don't consider. Every believer that stands at the judgment seat of Christ is standing in their glorified bodies. Amen. Have you, has it ever occurred to you that you're standing at the judgment seat of Christ in your glorified body? Amen. So it is not a judgment for sin, okay? No. Nope. And then there's another judgment the Bible teaches, the judgment of the nations. Now again, you and I will not be there. The judgment of the nations will happen after the seven years of tribulation. And during that time, because the church will be raptured, God will raise 144,000 Jewish evangelists. Like 144,000 Billy Grahams. Amen. And these are Jewish evangelists. They know their Bible well. If you think you know the Aleph Taf? They know Aleph too tough. Amen. You, know, you think you know your Hebrew? They know the Hebrew of Hebrews. They are Hebrews themselves. And, and 144,000 Jewish evangelists will, will, will preach all across uh, 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 the Middle East and, and Europe. And the Bible says those who listen to them, but those who don't listen to them at the judgment seat of the nations, they'll be tried. How they respond. To the 144,000. I was naked, you didn't clothe me. I was hungry, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you didn't give me drink. So it's a sheep nation or goat nation. We are not there. We are still up there enjoying the seven years. Amen? Of party. It's a form of party, okay? I know some, some religious people don't like me to use that word. Right? Okay, marriage supper of the lamb. <laughs> In today's vernacular, all right, Chinese shiato. It is party. <laughs> and nothing wrong with using that word. In fact, when Jesus shared the story of the prodigal son, the father actually said, let's party. Let us make merry. Amen? Everyone was happy. The boy came home, except two. Two persons were not happy. The older brother and the fatted calf. All right, those are the only two not happy, right? <laughs> so God, God loves, God loves to, to have His people happy around Him. You know, like like yesterday, I noticed that when I was I spent some time with Justin, I took some time uh, out of my study just to spend time with him, watching a video, all right, a video that he likes, and and he starts laughing and he starts giggling and all that. You know, for a parent, you understand what I'm saying, all right? There's a joy. They don't have to do anything, all right, to see them happy. Hey, where, 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 where did we get that from? Why are we like that? Because God made you in His image. God loves to see you happy. Amen. Amen. But, but, but Pastor Prince, I'm happy uh, with this man. But he's married. No, you do no, not no, know no, what no. is really happiness. <laughs> oh, no. Alright? So God will not sanction that. God will not, uh, 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 you know, smile at that. Amen. Though you pray, you think God is answering your prayer. He is not. Amen. God is not out to destroy families. And God, God has someone better for you. Amen. Right now, I can imagine it. Trust your father. Amen. Can I have a good amen? amen? Trust your father. Let me tell you about God. God God's heart is amazing. Alright? God loves you more than you know. Amen. Even the hairs on your head are all numbered. Amen. No hair, he also know the number. <laughs> that one, I also know the number. <laughs> Jesus himself said in the Gospels, look up here, Jesus says in Matthew 10, are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. Two sparrows sold for one copper coin. And then in Luke, Jesus says, are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins, and not one of them is forgotten before God. So you have two sparrows, one copper coin. Five sparrows, two copper coins. One thrown in free. You see? One is thrown in free. If two, one copper coin. Four, should be two copper coins, right? Two should get four, right? 
but five, you get five. So one thrown in free. That means birds and sparrows here are actually the sparrows that are little birds. If God, God uh, uh, values them, hey, how much more God values you? In fact, they are, they are so, um, you know, uh, like uh, so uh, easy to find, you can throw in one free. But God says, look at this, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Behold the birds of the air, once Jesus said this. They toil not, neither do they spin, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Are you not of more value than they? This part here you must read more in my book, Live the Let Go Life. Do you enjoy the book? Like what I said, do you feel a buff? Every chapter, you know, it bathes you, amen, until you feel like you don't have a struggle to be free from anxiety and worry. You find it, you know, it just, it just melts like, like butter on a hot day. Amen. Spend time reading God's word in that book. And uh, don't forget, God put teachers in the Bible, I mean, in, in the church. Amen. Bible tells us that. Now, watch this. The Bible says back to uh, Revelation 20. So, then I saw a great white throne. The third judgment will be the great white throne. Now, here we are not appearing as well. Amen. This will be all the living and the dead. Those who are alive when Jesus comes again. Okay. And then uh, this will be the final, the final assize, the final judgment. Amen. And this will be like, like there'll be after God and the God war, after Jesus comes back, he established a 1,000 year rule. Okay. And after the 1,000 year, year rule of peace and prosperity and plenty. Amen. Uh, on earth, millennial. Operating from Israel. 1,000 years on earth. Like, like the world has never seen it. Amen. Millennium. Where a, if someone dies at the age of 100, it's considered a child. After the 1,000 millennia rule, then you have the great white throne judgment. Then there's a devil be thrown, uh, there'll be a corner god wall, the devil, devil's final, uh, final rebellion. Okay? Raising people to rebel. You have thought of the 1,000 millennia rule, people will still not do it. Alright? There'll be a corner god, and then the devil who deceived them will cast. Then I saw a great white throne, and he who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. I don't care uh, whether you are a VVVIP, whether you are a simple person who sells the newspaper down the street, right? I, I don't care. Small and great, everyone will stand before God. Okay? And another book, and books, books, plural, were opened. And another book was opened. The Bible talks about books, books that you do. A single deed of kindness, it is written in the book. And uh, whenever you do something, even a cup of cold water is written in the book. The last chapter of the Old Testament, Malachi, talks about the, those who feared the Lord spoke often to one another. And the Lord had a book of remembrance written for them. Okay, I'm going to stop it right there, you guys. I don't want this to get too long. But also, I'm going to give... I'm going to uh, resume it. There's a little bit more left of the tape here. Like I said, thank you, Susan Sweetheart. This is such a blessing. But I'm also, when I put the second part of this, I'm also going to uh, reiterate on some of the subjects that he touched on and give a little bit more in-depth teaching on them. So you guys have a blessed day. And I pray this was a blessing to you. Uh, thank you, Susan, so very much, sweetheart. Amen <laughs> and amen. <laughs>